Hey guys, how's it going? We have a fun project ahead of us today out here in the cut flower garden. I have gathered up all of our trays of ranunculus and our one tray of anemones, and we are gonna get them in the ground today. Look at this, just tray after tray of beautiful looking plants already growing. We started the process of pre-sprouting these a couple of weeks ago in the greenhouse. And in that process, you take your corms out of storage and they look like shriveled up dead things and you soak them for three to four hours. And in that process, they kind of plump up and start to look like they have a little bit of life. And then you take those corms, line them up in trays that you're seeing right now, put a little soil underneath and above them. And then usually you put them in a spot that's like 50 to 55 degrees and let them start to form roots. Usually when you're getting them out of the pre-sprout stage, they don't have a bunch of foliar growth, but I never moved mine out of the greenhouse and it was getting quite warm in there. So they just started to grow. So like this right here is not always visible. I mean, you might see a little bit of growth um, in the pre-sprout stage, but usually what you're seeing, and I'm going to try to get a few of these out of here. <laughs> Look at this. Oh my word. Usually what you're seeing is just the white roots start to form around the original clump, like the corm that you put in there. This one looks a little bit more typical as to what you get out of the trays at the end. And this step is not necessary, but it does gain you usually a couple of weeks time, maybe even more in this case, since they put on so much growth already. And it's nice when you live in an area where they're not perennial, like ranunculus are perennial, I think in zones eight through 10. In that case, they're usually being planted in the fall and then they can overwinter outside. But here in our zone, we're zone six. So anything seven and under, we plant them in the spring. So if we can get a jump start on things, even better. But the other thing I'm excited about today is that after we get these all planted in the ground and get the irrigation set up out here, we're going to set up a low caterpillar tunnel over the top of them with a little bit of, um, it's a light duty, I'll give you all the details when I get it out of the bag, but it's a, a frost protection cloth that just kind of helps keep heat in, keeps um, bugs out if you keep the you know fabric down, but it allows enough light in so that the plants are happy. And I'm hoping that um, also speeds up our growing season with them. But this is what it's called. This is a low cat from Never Sink Farm. Here's some of the pieces and parts right here. I don't have it all out yet. I am a total sucker. I saw it in a reel and I thought I've got to have one of those. I got to try it because it looks like it's super easy to set up. Looks like it is. And it also, uh, you can raise and lower the frost protection cloth really easily without using a bunch of clips, which is what I've done up to this point. And it's a total pain when you have to use clips on the fabric and they rip and all that stuff. So anyway, I'm excited about that. Here's where we're going to be working. We've got all of our daffodils and tulips, which have grown a lot since I think I think they've grown a lot since the last time we looked at them. There's some that are just real strong, like the best pink right here and then the best white right after it, tulips. But everything's looking great. We're gonna do our ranunculus in this space right here, but this low cat tunnel is a three footer. So I am going to have the edge of it be about right here. So I'm gonna need to be moving drip tape over a bit and then we're going to be going into the walking path here and making it a planting bed. I want more space between our beds anyway. Things need to shift around. So uh, we're going to be taking these out and running new ones. So the first part of our project today is going to be working on that. I have four stakes. I'm gonna mark off a three foot like long rectangle box. These are 60 foot um, runs. And then we're going to reposition drip tape and I'm gonna run three rows of drip tape down our three foot wide bed. So if we get in here, I'm gonna pull this up a little bit, I think. Woo, it's tacked down. So I'm just gonna basically cut this out of our main water line right here and just put a straight coupler in and then just shift over where we need our new ones. I think before we do anything, whoop, I, before we do anything and make any cuts on our water line though, I think I'm gonna stake off where the tunnel's gonna go so we know exactly the area where we're gonna be working. So for that, we've got twine, I've got a mallet, a tape measure, and some stakes. Doing the precision stuff is my least favorite part, so let's get that over with. You know what, I'm gonna go ahead and remove these because I know they have to move. So we're just gonna cut out the couplers and put the straight ones in, the main line.
There, now we have a blank slate to work with. All right, we've got our space marked off, three feet wide, 60 feet long. Uh, you can see that I went into where we planted last year, but we'll have a little bit more space to walk. And even though the ranunculus aren't gonna take up an enormous amount of room, like they don't get super big and bushy and hang over the sides like cosmos and zinnias and dahlias and things like that, it's still gonna be nice to have room to move about. And also, once the ranunculus are done, I usually put in a later crop of zinnias. So that's most likely the, what will go into this space and it'll be nice to have um, room to walk with your basket or buckets or whatever the case may be. So now we've got to go in and I'm just gonna lightly turn this soil over, I think a little bit. I don't know, think I'm gonna have to do a tremendous amount, but I just wanna cultivate it a bit so it's nice and soft. And then we will go through and plant. Once everything is planted, I will run the drip lines and then we'll put in the low cap. So to cultivate the soil, I'm just gonna use a hula hoe. I think it's gonna work well, let's test it. Staples. Yeah, it'll take a little bit of elbow grease, but I only wanted to just kind of rough up the top few inches of soil. And it dawned on me as I was just working the soil that I should spread my Biotone starter fertilizer out right now. And as I'm working the soil, it'll turn it all in and mix it, whoops, mix it all together. Okay, so fertilizer, cultivate, and then we'll be ready to plant. Okay, that step is done. It didn't take near as long as I thought, thank goodness. I decided I'm gonna run our drip next because I don't have to rough up the soil at all. I should be able to run my rows of drip, tack them down and just plant around them. You can see the piles of drip tape that I just pulled. We've used those runs of drip tape two years in a row and we have such hard water that I was noticing toward the end of last season. In fact, I can show you. Um, some of the holes, some of the drippers were dripping and some of them were not. See that crust right there? And you can even see like on the back side where it has settled. Yeah, so some of them are plugged and some of them aren't. So we're starting with fresh drip tape this year, but I can use the enders and the couplers. Oh my, can you even see in there? Look at all of that sediment. Ooh, I think we should flush these out. wonder if I could just <laughs> <laughs> we're 
We're gonna take these to a hose. <laughs> Oh yeah, spick and span. These are all cleaned out and our drip tape here has emitter holes every six inches. It works really well for us. It's less expensive than buying like that brown drip tubing. Uh, and if it's gonna get clogged anyway, I'd rather spend less money on it. Plus you can go way further with this than you can with traditional drip tubing. The only downside I can see with this is that you can't make curves. You have to run straight lines of this because it's kind of rigid and it needs to lay with the drip emitters facing upward. Um, otherwise sediment can block the emitter holes. It seems like counterintuitive, but that's the way it's done. So before we even pull this off the spool and down our row, I'm going to attach my ender here. So to do that, you open this all the way up so you can kind of see the barbs and then you slide your drip tape on, which usually, oh, there we go. The drip tape is a little bit warm right now, so it's kind of a floppier. It's harder to get on here. And then you tighten it on like so. Pull test. Good. Now we'll pull it down and stake it at the end. And then down on this end, I got my tape measure back out and figured out how to break this up into thirds to where it made sense. So it's 36 inches wide. We're gonna put one of our couplers in at nine inches. One will go in right in the middle at 18 inches. And then the next one will go in at 27 inches or just as close to 27 as we can. Of course, our little coupler is right there. So we'll just put it right to the side of that. This is our punching tool. So we'll punch a hole in our supply line and then put our coupler in and then we'll attach our drip tape just the same as we did the ender. Okay, let's see if I can do this. There we go. So you can see this one's all ready to go. And I love these couplers. You can get them with or without the inline uh, valve. I love having the valve because let's say we get down the road and we figure out that maybe three runs is a little bit too much in this space. So we can shut off the middle one and just have two of them run. Uh, so anyway, I just like having that flexibility. So I've got it set to the on position. Our drip tape is facing up. So you'll be able to see those two lines and the emitter holes. So now we just need to do two more. kidding me we had just enough
bed preparation is done and that's always the part that takes the longest so we've got it all ready to go for water there's fertilizer in there so now we're just down to planting and i'm going to start my planting row in two feet because at the end of this low cat tunnel you have to have room to gather your fabric and pin it down and there's lawn right here and i don't want it in the way of the lawn mower so i think two feet is plenty i don't know uh, but this part's fun taking all of the corms out oh my gosh <laughs> oh my goodness so we take them out and separate them and each one of these is going to turn into a big beautiful plant we plant these about two inches deep about six to nine inches apart from one another so i'm going to be planting on either side of the drip tape all the way down okay i hope that's easy to see but basically we just go kind of zigzag around each one of the rows of drip tape and i try to line everything up to where you know it's all offset so wherever this one bounces in there's not one right across the way from it. It's on the other side of that drip tape, if that makes sense. So every row lines up with each other, and so they shouldn't run into each other. But my goodness, we haven't even made it through half a flat. <laughs> I might squeeze these a little closer together. But when we go into plant, really easy. Boom. Super fast. That's about how I want it to look. I don't think I want more than one row of ranunculus, and we only have just a handful of anemones, so we'll tuck those at the, in, at the end of the row. So it's likely I'll be looking for homes for some of these, because we've got a lot. Here we go. they have all been planted and watered in oh my word and they fit perfectly i do have some leftover ranunculus almost a whole tray but they're all kind of miscellaneous they were unidentified they didn't have lab a label and my mom's going to take that whole tray um, to put in one of her raised beds so all of these right here and then with the very few anemones that i do have i might just pop those in our raised beds up closer to the house and just let those be a pretty flower accent up there. So now we're to a point where we're gonna do the low cat tunnel. And you'll notice that I started planting two feet in. So you can see the first plants right here because that's where our first hoop is gonna go. The fabric you gather and tie to one of these great big stakes. So I needed to have enough space. I'm not sure exactly where this is gonna go. Two feet might even be um, a little generous, but I wanted to make sure that we had plenty so i stopped also two feet shy of the end and then these are the parts right here so basically you stick this in the ground right where you want your tunnel to kind of start and you stick it in all the way <laughs> i gotta stand up i'm on my knees hold on all the way to where the little circle is close to the ground and then you take your top piece which is more slender and stick it in there like that so it's just straight up and down and this piece is really flexible and i watched their instructional video on how to set this thing up and they stopped specifically to say do not let go of this when you're working on bending it because it is a very flexible metal and it can smack you in the face <laughs> if you're not careful so anyway we're going to be very careful that that doesn't happen today and then you take your other one and put it in on the other side so nice that we have strings run should be pretty tidy looking in the end. And then you basically just bend this one over and put it in that one. But I'm gonna have to do that with both hands, I think. And you can space these anywhere from five to 10 feet apart. So I actually have enough. I bought just one of the kits and I think it came with 20. Is it 20 sets? Ooh, I can't remember. 
Yeah, so it came with enough to make 20 hoops. So I have enough to do another row, which might be kind of nice to use for our snapdragons. Uh, the snapdragons tend, tend to be a thrip magnet. So if I can get the right kind of cloth, um, it's just like, kind of like a sheer mesh almost. It's, it's white still um, and it, it allows a lot of light in, but it keeps all the bugs out. That might be a really great way of handling that situation this year. So anyway, what I plan to do is one set of hoops on either end. I'm gonna find where the center is and put one there. And then I'm gonna figure out how many put in, to put in between. I don't think I'm gonna go um, quite five feet apart. They'll probably be a little bit further than that, but not 10 because we do get quite a lot of wind and I want things to be pretty secure out here. Otherwise, <laughs> what's the point? Okay, so let's get all the hoops up. After we do that, then you put your fabric on. And it's not really, that's pretty self-explanatory. You just wanna drape your fabric over the whole thing. Uh, and it's not until you put the little strings on to attach it and kind of secure it all where we'll stop probably. And uh, I'll show you what it looks like. All right, all of the hoops are in. I ended up using two, four, six, eight, nine. Nine in this whole space. They're roughly six and a half feet apart from one another. So I think we should be good in terms of wind. I'm gonna run this little stake down to the other end so we're ready for the frost cloth. So that'll go right here. This is the frost cloth right here. You can see how sheer it is. This one was rated for not as cold as you could get. Let's see if there's a FP20, I guess. This is 115 feet by seven and a half feet, which the seven and a half feet is supposedly perfect for this size of low tunnel. And then I got the, enough length to do a couple rows. There was a much heavier cloth that you could get, but I figured at this point, you know, at this point, like it feels today, like these wouldn't even need protection, but they have been in a greenhouse and they've been growing in there and it's been super warm. So they're not acclimated to our nighttime temperatures, but ranunculus are pretty tough. They usually are fine until they go below 28. That's when they will uh, freeze and start to rot. And I don't think we're gonna get that cold. But the other reason why I still wanna go ahead with this uh, is just to protect them over the next couple of weeks because we do have a cool down coming, but I also wanna protect them from, I uh, like the blooms from rain and also protect the blooms from thrips. I'm hoping this cuts down on that. Now I need to, a second pair of hands. I'm gonna see if Aaron can come out here and help me hold the cloth. Is you're supposed to sort of drape it over the first one and then I tie it to this. Okay. To kind of just secure it. I'll retie it after we're all done. Okay. But we need it unfurled enough to where you can stand over here okay. and I can kind of drape it over the first rung here. Oh, I see. In a sort of straight, straight way. Now I'll take one side of it. If you take the other, and we'll just go the distance. Could just put a pole in the middle. Maybe. Well, we could. We have a tool. You want to? That's all right. It, this is. This will go. Oh wait a minute. This is. Oh, it has to unfold after it. You can just set it on the ground. Okay. Okay, so we've got the fabric just loosely placed over the structures or the hoops. Aaron's kind of holding it there at the end. So now we're supposed to cut it and I would like to make sure I've got plenty. So I'm thinking of cutting it about here. Yeah. So in the video, the instructional video that I watched, they tied it off on one side and they came down here and tied it off again and then untied it again at the beginning and kind of messed with it huh. and centered it if it needs it. So, through, do you mind stepping on it? How far down? All the way, almost all the way. Okay, that's good for now. So we haven't secured the fabric yet, but he did say that you could p pull these up a little bit and tuck the fabric underneath once you've got your straps on and you can pin it down that way as well, like underneath those little loops, but we're not quite there yet. We need to readjust this just a little bit and get our little bungee strap things on. So this is the next step right here. They're just like bungees and you hook on one side right here and you go around 
to the other side and hook it over that. So one side on the end will be kind of down and this one of course is here. Once we do the next couple, they'll look more like this on either side. Yeah, isn't that awesome? You love it? I do. Oh my goodness, you guys, we got it all secured. That was the easiest setup ever. And the best part about it is that these are just kind of holding the fabric in place. They're not pinching it down. Like the other way I used to do it is with the clip. So if you needed to get in there to water or to tend to your plants or to pick flowers or whatever, you had to take off a bunch of clips. In this case though, all you have to do is scoot the fabric up and then when you're done scoot it back down what i didn't know something so easy existed <laughs> i'm so happy with this oh my goodness and this was the easiest part of our entire project today and i think two feet was the perfect amount of space so our row actually starts right here or our plants rather start here and then that allowed enough space to get it tied off at the end. So now I'm thinking another row right here for our snapdragons with one of these. And I actually like the look of this sort of thing because it looks like there's something going on, like something interesting. I always, when I see these, want to know what people are growing underneath them. So in our case, we're growing ranunculus, a whole bunch of them. Six rows, 56 feet long each. So six times 56, it's a lot. And I did pop a few extras in between those rows too. So it should be a very, floriferous display in the end. And as far as our anemones go, you can see our tray just looks so sad. I think it stayed too wet in the greenhouse, honestly. Most of the little corms, uh, it looks like they rotted. Like, they're kind of squishy. Ooh, that one's really squishy. A few have a tiny little bit of growth right here. These are the, oh geez. I can't even, edge of night. Looks like there's a few in here. So we'll just probably pop those in the raised beds or in a container, that might be kind of pretty. And you guys, that is gonna do it for our project today. I could not be happier with how the planting went, how just all of it, the low cat tunnel, I just got it in the mail yesterday. I've been uh, kind of like really anxious to get it because I could see all the growth on these ranunculus. I could have probably planted them a week ago, um, but it's just nice to get them in the ground and they will take off really quick. Now it's likely on the days like today we're 69 degrees, I think, um, I will go and lift all of that fabric up so that it can have air, but then I can just go out and just easily pull it down for the nights that get colder. We have a couple of nights, I think I already mentioned that are near freezing and I don't know what's gonna happen after that. Sometimes in April we get a weird cold spell where it gets really cold and we get do, some, do get some freezing temperatures. So I'm hoping that this provides the protection that the ranunculus need and also kind of helps boost their growth and maybe we'll have some blooms a little bit earlier. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Now I'm gonna go put away all of my stuff and water all the rest of my plants. That's what the rest of my day holds. <laughs> See you guys in the next video. Bye.